Welcome back, everybody, to this series where we are trying to determine if Andre Drummond and Blake Griffin are a championship caliber frontcourt. In this video, we are going to be talking about Andre Drummond for pretty much the entirety of the episode. One of the knocks on Drummond is that he does not perform good against the other good centers in the league. So I wanted to do is find out how much merit it holds. In this video, I'm going to be doing head-to-head -head comparisons when Drummond went against Joel Embiid, Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, Nicole Jokic, Clint Capella, Anthony Davis, Miles Turner, Steven Adams, and Nikola Vucevic during the 2018-2019 season. I didn't get all the centers that I probably wanted to for various reasons, like Drummond not playing against them this season, but I think this is a good start. At the end of this video, I will be tallying up where Drummond won the matchup and where Drummond lost the matchup. We're going to start with how Drummond performed against Joel Embiid in the 2018-2019 season. Here's what Drummond and Embiid's stats were when they went head-to-head -head this season. If the player's average in these matchups was below their regular season average, I placed a minus sign next to it. For example... Drummond's 14.3 points per game was lower than his regular season average. If the player's average in the matchup was higher than the regular season average, I put a plus sign next to it, like Embiid's 32 points. And if the average was equal to their regular season average, then I placed an equal sign next to it, like Embiid's assists and steals. If a player won the matchup in a category, then I put it in bold. Embiid's points were greater than Drummond's in this matchup, so I put it in bold. Everything I explained will apply to all of these head-to-head -head comparisons. But Joel Embiid so far has got Drummond's number. Drummond did average more steals and rebounds than Embiid, but Embiid's field goal percentage went up, and so did his blocks and points. Drummond's overall production went down when he went against Embiid this season. So I'm going to have to say that Embiid wins this matchup. I want to note that it is not hopeless, though, for Drummond to start playing well against Embiid. On two different occasions throughout Drummond's career, he did hold Embiid to under 40% from the field. Overall, Embiid has dominated Drummond. Kevin Garnett said something very interesting when Drummond was training with him. All great players all have a player that pushed them to the next level, and that dynamic is there for that. So let's see how that turns out. But now let's go to the next center. Rudy Gobert is one of my favorite players in the NBA. He is pretty much everything I am a sucker for in a basketball player. Drummond has about 65% of what I, I am a sucker for, but not quite 100. Now, this matchup was a tale of two extremes. In the first matchup between the two, Drummond outplayed Gobert, getting more rebounds, more points, and shooting better from the field. The second time, though, Gobert dominated Drummond, forcing Drummond to a field goal percentage much worse than his regular season average. Gobert also dominated Drummond on the glass by bringing in 25 rebounds to 13 rebounds in the second matchup. When it's averaged out, though, Gobert won the matchup with Drummond this year, shooting Bear from the field, getting more rebounds, more assists, and more blocks. Gobert's numbers, for the most part, went up compared to his regular season average as well. In these first two matchups, Drummond has not outperformed the other center. In all honesty, I'm not that shocked that Gobert has outperformed Drummond, though, because players like Gobert are built to shut players like Drummond down. Now, Drummond is 0 for 2 so far, but let's see how he fares against Nikola Jokic. Now, Drummond has actually fared really good when he played against Jokic. And particularly this year, Drummond didn't average as many points as Jokic, but Drummond won the battle in most of the categories that I have up. And Jokic's overall production against Drummond was down pretty much all the way across the board. I think we can give the edge to Drummond in this matchup because Drummond had a better field goal percentage, more rebounds, and more blocks, and even averaged less turnovers per game. So yeah, I think we can give Drummond the edge in this matchup. Drummond has dominated Carl Anthony Towns in his career, and this season was no exception. Not only did Drummond dominate Towns in pretty much every statistical category, Towns' production went down in every category except for blocks when playing against Drummond this year. And on top of dominating Towns in almost every category, Drummond's team won. So Drummond wins this matchup. 
I had to rewind one season for my Drummond versus Anthony Davis comparison because Anthony Davis left the game early with an injury in the first matchup, along with Davis and Drummond both being inactive for the second matchup. One thing that also makes it difficult is that Drummond and Davis were not guarding each other really, even in this season that I'm using for this comparison. But overall, throughout their careers, Davis has dominated Drummond. In these matchups, Drummond, Drummond's production was down across the board. Davis's production was also lower, except for in points, but 34 points per game for Davis means I'm probably going to have to give the edge to Davis in this matchup and his teams won. Clint Capella outperformed Andre Drummond in the two times they met this season. In all honesty, this is inexcusable. Drummond, my man, how are you letting Capella dominate you this hard, dude? You got outscored and out-rebounded by mother Clint Capella, my man. It's okay, this is hopefully just an anomaly. Let's move on to Miles Turner. Against Miles Turner, Drummond's team did lose the series, but Drummond himself outperformed Miles Turner. Drummond's production was up all the way across the board. Turner's production increased in four categories, but Drummond dominated him in scoring and in the rebounding department. He also averaged more assists and steals. So I think I'll give the edge to Drummond in this case right here. Drummond got destroyed by Steven Adams in their head-to-head -head matchups. Drummond's blocks went up against Adams, but everything else was down. Adams averaged more points, rebounds, and assists. On top of all that, Adams was shooting a whopping 82.3% from the field. I don't know what went so horribly wrong in this matchup, but like I said in the, his matchups with Capella. Come on, man! The last matchup I want to go over before I tally this all up is Andre Drummond versus Nikola Vucevic. Drummond was more productive pretty much all the way across the board against Vucevic. Vucevic's points, rebounds, steals, and blocks were all down when he played against Andre Drummond this year, and his field goal percentage was also down. Drummond, on the other hand, had a better field goal percentage, more rebounds, steals, and blocks compared to his regular season averages. Drummond's turnovers were up, but Vucevic's were up as well. Drummond's team won the season series against Vucevic, and Drummond outperformed him statistically. So I think I'm going to give Andre Drummond the edge here. So let's tally everything up now. When we tally this all up, Drummond outscored the opposing center in three out of the nine cases we looked at. He had a better field goal percentage in four out of the nine cases. Drummond outassisted the opposing center four times, had more blocks three times, more steals eight times, and less turnovers five times. Based on my judgment, Drummond won the individual matchup with Jokic, Towns, Turner, and Vucevic. Drummond lost the individual matchup based on my judgment against Embiid, Gobert, Davis, Capella, and Adams. That adds up to Drummond winning the individual matchup in 4 out of 9 of these cases. It's not great, and it's not terrible, but there's definitely potential for improvement going forward. And if you agree or disagree with who I said won the individual matchup, feel free to let me know. Drummond held the opposing center below their scoring average in 4 out of the 9 cases we looked at. He held the opposing center below their field goal average 4 out of 9 times. Drummond held the opposing center below their rebound average 6 times. I think we can all agree that with Drummond being as good of a rebounder as he is, it should have been 9 out of 9 times. Drummond held the opposing center below their assist average 6 times, below their block average 4 times, and below their steal average 5 times, and got the opposing center to commit a higher turnover rate 3 times. Those are the effects that Drummond had on the opposing center. But now let's see the effects that the opposing center had on Drummond. In the cases that I've brought up, Drummond was held below his scoring average five times, and his field goal percentage was down four times. Drummond's rebounding average was down in seven of these cases, but a good chunk of those cases, it was down by like one rebound or less. And he still did ultimately out-rebound the opposing center, even if his overall rebounds were down. Drummond's assists were down in four of these cases, his blocks were down in only three of these cases. His steals were down in six of these nine cases, and he committed more turnovers in five of them. So when we add all of these categories up of Drummond outproducing the opposing center in a certain stat, or holding the opposing center below their average in a certain stat, and Drummond being held below his average in a certain stat, 
Drummond outperforms the opposing center in 9 out of 21 categories by my count. So Drummond was really good at times and at other times he was not. He does need to be more consistent against the better centers in the NBA. But he was mostly fine against the better competition. He wasn't unstoppable, but he wasn't a corpse either. I don't know if you guys noticed what I noticed, but I felt Drummond struggled against the more traditional centers like Capella, Gobert, and Adams. However, he was very solid against the stretch fives like Towns and Vucevic and Turner. Even Jokic, to an extent, can be a stretch five. He didn't shoot well from three this season, but there have been seasons of very solid three-point shooting out of Jokic. Unfortunately, I could not give an answer right now as to why Drummond has had success versus stretch fives and struggles versus traditional centers. But it definitely is something to potentially dive into at some point. Well, I think that will be all for this episode. I hope you all learned something new and I hope you all enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode while we try to figure out if Drummond and Griffin are a championship caliber frontcourt.